Ordinary folks with no financial education can be wealthy if they have a handful of behavioral skills that have nothing to do with formal measures of intelligence. In the small town of Brattleboro, Vermont, there lived a man, a quiet, simple man, who would later become an absolute legend. His name was Ronald Reed. Drive the same roads every day. We both get there our own way. This land and apple tree. How different do so? 2014, at the age of 92, Ronald Reed passed away. But what happened next absolutely shocked everyone. And that's because at the time of his death, Mr. Reed was in possession of $8 million. I was tremendously surprised, Brown said upon finding of his stepfather's hidden wealth. He was a hard worker, but I don't think anybody had an idea that he was a multimillionaire. But why was he so surprised? $8 million is a lot of money, let's get that straight. But what makes it so unbelievable for a man like Ronald Reed to accumulate that much wealth? Everyone was completely blown away because Ronald wasn't some kind of finance executive big shot or Ivy League graduate. In fact, Ronald had only graduated from high school. You see, Mr. Reed was actually a gas station attendant for 25 years until he decided to retire. However, shortly after retiring, he found that retirement didn't really suit his style, so he became a janitor at J.C. Penney for another 17 years. That's right, Ronald Reed, the man, the myth, and the legend, is the $8 million janitor, and his story is equal parts fascinating, inspiring, and heartwarming. Together, nothing worth having comes easy baby to outsiders reed appeared as a man who was perhaps even struggling a local resident stated at one point that she knit him a hat because he seemed like he could use some help to get through the winter and at his favorite coffee shop inside the local hospital a customer once paid for his breakfast because they thought he did not have the means i mean just listen to this he always had a cup of coffee and an english muffin with peanut butter ellen smith said of her friend's morning ritual at the hospital cafe that was it and he always sat at the exact same stool at the counter this man was just so wholesome. Not only that, Reed was the first of his family to graduate from high school, and to get to school, he would walk or hitchhike four miles daily. Later in life, he drove a secondhand Toyota Yaris, held his clothes together with safety pins, and chopped his own firewood into his 90s. His lawyer, Lori Rowell, stated, You'd never know the man was a millionaire. The last time he came here, he parked far away in a spot where there were no meters so he could save the coins. Absolutely incredible. And it turns out that his lawyer, Miss Rowell, was actually the one to help him create a will which would see 1.2 million of his wealth be given to his local library and another 4.8 million be given to his local hospital. It was the talk of the town, Brooks Memorial Library director Star Latronica told CNBC of the generous 1.2 million library donation, people still come in and ask about it and reference it. Brattleboro Memorial Hospital received 4.8 million from the Reed Estate. It is the largest single gift the hospital has ever received. This is a substantial amount of money for the hospital to receive, Pattison said. We are very appreciative of what Mr. Reed left. It's pretty incredible. This is not something that happens on a regular basis. I don't know about you, but I think what this man did completely puts whatever I'm doing in life to shame. I mean, he was such a selfless and self-made man who quietly built up this fortune over time to be able to make such a massive impact on his community. So how did he actually 
actually grow that $8 million? Well, it turns out that he didn't do anything too extraordinary. He just simply saved what little money he earned and then invested that into blue chip stocks. And then he held these stocks for his entire life. That's it. Just a classic, simple approach to building wealth that works. I wanted to share the story of Ronald Reed with you guys today because it contains such an extremely valuable lesson about managing our own personal finances or investing. And that lesson is the distinction between knowledge and behavior. About four months before Ronald Reed passed away and donated his wealth, a massive mansion was being sold in Greenwich, Connecticut. This $32 million home was 18,000 square feet featuring two elevators, two pools, and seven garages. Guests still recall the thrill of dining and dancing atop a see-through covering on the home's indoor swimming pool. This extravagant home was the property of a man named Richard Fuscone. Richard was a Harvard-educated Merrill Lynch executive with an MBA. Crane's Business Magazine once named him Top 40 Under 40. After an extremely successful career in finance, Mr. Fuscone left his job to pursue other pastures. But Richard Fuscone's home wasn't being sold exactly because he wanted to sell it, it was actually being auctioned off. And that's because he was bankrupt. Unfortunately, Richard had borrowed heavily to build out his home, which allegedly cost $90,000 per month to maintain. And then the financial crisis hit. What in the world is happening on Wall Street? Traders say this is the craziest day they have ever seen. Apple shares are just getting hammered. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. Because we're now down 43%. Since he was up to his ears in debt to finance the extravagant home, he had to declare bankruptcy and lost everything. So how do we have two completely different people here? One, a man who had all the knowledge, resources, and experience in life that should be able to bring about success, but he lost everything. And then four months later, we have this other person who walked or hitchhiked every day to get to high school just so he could be the first one in his family to graduate from high school and then become a janitor only to secretly and quietly amass this wealth of $8 million over his lifetime. The answer is the difference between knowledge and behavior. And this answer has such massive implications for you. Yes, you, because Ronald didn't have any kind of special knowledge. Instead, he just made a series of right choices at the right time. And these choices are available to all of us. As Morgan Housel states in the book, The Psychology of Money, finance is a unique field where someone with no knowledge can vastly outperform an expert. I mean, think about any other field, whether it's medicine, architecture, engineering, I mean, whatever. There's no way you're going to be able to do heart surgery better than an actual surgeon. But in personal finance and investing, you can absolutely do better than an expert. And that's because you can behave better than an expert. Knowing what to do and actually doing it are not the same thing. I know I shouldn't check my YouTube stats too often or I'll get too caught up in the numbers. Does that mean I don't do it? No, it's something that I have to keep constantly reminding myself and keep working on that behavior. It's completely different from knowledge. I know I shouldn't look at my numbers all the time, but I still do it anyway. Richard Fuscone was an expert. He had the knowledge, but Ronald Reed didn't. Instead, Ronald just behaved in a certain way consistently over time. And there are two very different outcomes perfectly illustrate the difference between knowledge and behavior. There are two fields in life which affect all of us whether we like it or not, health and finance. One of these fields has gotten better and better over time, vastly improving our lives. Can you guess which one it is? It's of course health. The advances in medicine have conquered many diseases, extended our lifespans, and overall have improved our quality of life. Finance, on the other hand, hasn't exactly. Despite some of the smartest minds in the world going into the financial field, have we actually become better at managing our own money? Have we become better investors than 50 years ago? Are we saving more money? Are more people retiring comfortably? How about avoiding debt? 
I think we all know the answer to those questions is a resounding no. There have definitely been advancements in the financial industry, but I struggle to see how those advancements have translated into improvements for our everyday lives. And as Housel states, most of the reason why I believe is that we think about and are taught about money in ways that are too much like physics with rules and law and not enough like psychology with emotions and nuance. I can tell you that you should try to save at least 10% of your income, that you should try and build an emergency fund worth six months of your living expenses, and also that you should buy and hold broad total market index funds for the long term. But does that mean that you'll actually do it? To understand why people go deep into debt, do we need to study the change of interest rates or should we perhaps look to feelings of greed, consumerist culture, and insecurity? Or how about determining why people continuously sell their investments at the bottom of a stock market crash? Should we look to calculations of discounted cash flows and future expected return? Or should we examine the feelings of fear and dread at the thought that your retirement nest egg is vanishing before your eyes? Don't get me wrong, I absolutely think it's super important to understand the mathematical relationships that describe the movement of money that kind of underpins the whole financial world that we live in. But at the same time, I think that Morgan Housel has really hit the nail on the head when he thinks that there isn't enough conversation going on right now about the other side of the coin, which is the psychology of how we interact with our money. I agree with him so strongly, as you may have noticed from previous videos where I talk about the psychological aspects of managing your own money, that I want to continue talking about this topic because I think it is so important. Not only do I want you to understand how interest rates affect investments, but I also want you to be able to make the right choices at the right time, just like Ronald Reed. So whether you're a teacher, a banker, a barista, a student, an artist, whoever you are, your $8 million fortune awaits. And it starts by changing your mind. Drive the same roads every day. Hello, sorry to interrupt that lovely music, but I just wanted to have one second of your attention. And this is for the people who are, you know, the true fans of Cash College because you've stuck to the end of this video. I just wanted to make a little announcement here to let you know that there's been a project that I've been working on for the past couple of months and I want to give some of you guys basically early and free access to this project. Now in order to be able to get this, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because later in the week I'm going to be doing some kind of announcement type thing where I'll randomly select a few of you to be able to get access to this. So make sure to follow me and stay tuned for those messages. Now back to the nice music. We both get there our own way This land and apple tree How different two souls can be